Good morning, folks. Sticking with weather extremes, Wichita February snow record has fallen, set 100 years ago, but back then it snowed all month. This just happened in the span of six days. The southern convergence of that same storm was still making news last night as hail and tornadoes were replaced with flooding and more tornadoes. A nuclear event in North Carolina was an HVAC incident and they claim neither reactor was even interrupted during the event. Two buoys in event mode? I'm ignoring both of them. Up north, the broken buoy showing what would be 1,000 foot yo-yo movement to the oceans if it were actually real, and it's not. And I'm ignoring inches of deviation only down here, except that this area might still want to be on watch from the Solomon tsunami. Looking at the cyclones, 18 is being destroyed by shear in the Indian Ocean as Rusty has made landfall and is disrupting power, bringing lots of rain and high winds. Southern Australia is welcoming this rainfall coming down south, but New Zealand would welcome it as well as they finally had their drought declared. Aid to farmers is on the way. Well, look at the size of the American low. Same one causing the U.S. weather I've discussed already. Midwest and New England should be ready for its arrival, but I want to draw your attention to the Pacific and ask if you're familiar with the concept of an arc storm. These North Pacific lows are tending to last much longer than history would suggest they should. They spin counterclockwise in the north, high pressure spins clockwise, so not only is there an eastward push reinforced by each other in the middle, but it's slamming together air of vastly different temperature, moisture, and electric potential. That's why it looks like a cloud machine is sitting in the central Pacific, the lows converging the air masses at that point. Now this is just a baby version of this new type of pattern we're seeing but it could truly bring biblical rain to the west coast of the US, Canada, or Mexico if these patterns continue in the future. On to some good news. Increased solar activity boosts the shields from cosmic rays and this is three straight days of falling density. Checking the sunspots, only one looks ready, the middle region, but despite the size she is almost perfectly divided magnetically. That needs to change if it's going to flare. This region is important for another reason I'll touch on momentarily. Well honestly, which of you didn't see this coming? With the Earth footprint down where the filament was turning, the biggest worry was a surge to our magnetic connection during an eruption, and we got one. As soon as it began to lift, before it had even left the sun, our energetic flux was dancing. Not at danger levels yet, but it should be monitored today for polar radiation events. That's all you guys at high latitude. You remember? Just as we called the quake watch based on the incoming coronal holes, the umbral field popped in to box us out. You could see the field lines magnetically shielding Earth from the coronal opening. Well, this is disappearing right around the time the filament got sick of the party, but instead of opening up the field to Earth, the central sunspots we just examined are building stronger umbral field as it grows itself, and we're still awaiting geo-effectiveness of the hole. But it's just gotten more complex than that. We are seeing some wicked coronal hole morphing. Not unheard of by any means, but to this degree is a rare sight. I do not know what it means for the geoeffective magnetism, but this watch just cut interesting for a different reason than I expected. Even without the quake factors really being present, we are seeing upticks in the 5 magnitude range. We cannot officially count this one because it's under the 6 magnitude rubric, but veteran watchers know anything over 4 magnitude here is rare, so this 5 pointer is very rare, 5.1 according to the USGS. Finally, we've had some eruptions at Rincon de la Vieja. We expect the other type of coronal hole impact today, a solar wind stream that should be minor. Let's watch these coronal holes and hope this watch stays as benign as the first 36 hours. Eyes open. No fear at 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.